Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight uh, Quinn half-inch drive digital torque wrench. I've recorded this video like five times. It is one of the most frustrating videos I've ever made, really. Anyway, because I've recorded it so many times, I'm just going to make this real short this time because I'm just tired of redoing it. The torque angle measurement is some kind of pseudo system, which does not work properly and it needs a minimum amount of torque and if it doesn't measure the torque increasing then it doesn't i mean it stops measuring the torque angle and i'll show that in a second it does have not have a, a mems or a microelectrical mechanical system nanotechnology gyroscope which is what it would need to actually be able to tell that the wrench is turning what it's doing is kind of doing some pseudo thing where it's uh def detecting the increasing amount of torque and then displaying it as a degree measurement and really pretty frustrating torque angle is really important they shouldn't have included on this wrench because it's not something you can rely on that's just flat out you need to rely on something like this which is just measuring how far the darn fastener is turning you need these because they're used in all sorts of situations, not just car head bolts that stretch, but in construction, and just all sorts of places because uh, threads are an inclined plane. When you turn a bolt a certain amount, it's going to move in a certain amount. And that moving in, you can, engineering, you can calculate the specific amount of force that it's applying. If you have a huge bolt with a huh, one thread per inch, then if you turn that bolt 90 degrees, that bolt will move in a quarter of an inch. And you know if that bolt moved in a quarter of an inch, it's going to apply so many, you know, in that case, there's so many thousands of pounds of force. And it doesn't matter if the threads are smashed or if they're rusty or, you know, if it takes 2,000 foot-pounds of torque just to get the darn bolt to start moving. If you move it 90 degrees, you know that you've uh, clamped down with a specific amount of linear pressure. I found that even the torque measurement on this, you know, was horribly inaccurate until I found out that it had come with carbon cell batteries and was throwing off its measurements. I put in new alkaline batteries and its measurements came back. Now, I didn't pay retail for this. This was $89.98 on the purple tag shelf, the return shelf. This one didn't even have a case. It's a bit scratched up and stuff, so I suspect it's been returned. It may have been returned even more than once. Probably for the same issues. Gets it and finds that it's just totally inaccurate and turns out that it's really battery issues. It really needs alkaline batteries that are in good shape. Anyway, I'm going to show about that torque angle measurement and really how it re it's kind of fake because if you have a fastener which does not increase in torque if it's just constant friction i don't know how many situations but maybe you have an engine or something that you're trying to turn a specific number of degrees for whatever reason you cannot use this wrench to attach the crankshaft and then turn it say 45 degrees because it wouldn't give you an accurate measurement it's doing some kind of weird interpolation but as far as actual being an actual digital torque wrench, I mean, it's okay. It does not have a backlit display, which is unfortunate. Sometimes going in the torque angle, it just displays these zeros just like this, and it just won't quit. You have to set it down, and then it kind of comes back, kind of indicating that it may have some type of cell phone type sensor, but it just doesn't work reliably. It does have both stop measuring in peak mode or just displaying in real time known as trace. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I have a fastener here that has a constant amount of friction on it, being viced up like this. I have a uh, paper towel because I don't want to just destroy my brand new jaws with a hardened steel bolt. This wrench, set to 90 degrees, we're going to go ahead and go vertical. Now, this is beyond, if the fastener doesn't have enough resistance to go, it needs about 15 foot-pounds of torque just to start registering. So this definitely requires more than 15 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to attempt to move this wrench. Well, I'm going to move it 90 degrees. We're going to see how far it actually thinks I moved it. I'm going real slow. Make sure it doesn't freak out. If you go too fast, it just stops reading altogether. together. 
and well that time it did a little better but still not something I would trust 86 degrees even though I moved at 90 just definitely not happy with that anyway we're gonna see its accuracy if you go real slow with the torque angle it seems to be kind of okay and so anyway that's kind of been my experience using this and I believe I'm gonna return it and be like the other people who have returned it where it's just not super consistent if I have it on the table here and I'm real careful making sure that I I don't have it in the vise and make sure that I'm uh, holding both wrenches absolutely perfectly the deflecting beam making sure that the rocking collar the deal with this is the uh, pivot right off the center point so making sure that I hold this like this I've got it set to 40 foot pounds so I'm gonna apply 40 just touch 40 in that case it's like 42 so it's a you know and there is a degree and I've learned that where uh, torque is a is sensitive generally speaking people even using click types and all these wrenches that they that are inherently accurate don't know that man when you're torquing something you can go and like a click type torque wrench when it clicks and then bumps over you just over torque the darn thing it's really and that's been kind of the the issue so i can't inherently say at least that the torque values on this are bad not to a point where i'd be willing to battle a lawsuit over it um but it's something where when it i just don't have an extreme degree of confidence and the amount of money that you're spending on this heck get the click type icon i think it's cheaper certainly it doesn't have any plastic certainly better made and you'll be better off with that type of that click type thing i understand why people like these torque wrenches specifically because of the way it beeps i mean I'll go down to 30 foot pounds because that can be a real advantage where you you're I mean click types are just fine but the beep is really uh, pretty loud pretty easy to get a to uh, to know that you're getting to there that's why it beeps fast when you're getting close to the value so you can be real careful I got it at 30 now Now, as far as that deflecting beam, I made sure I was looking square at it. We got 31. So, once again, it's okay. This has been a hard video to make because uh, if you don't do everything just right when you're doing the de when I'm doing the demonstrations, making sure that I'm looking perfectly square on this, making sure that I have the handle uh, right pivoting making sure that when the needle comes over that I'm stopping right where the needle just boom right when it hits that line because you know if you go over a little bit it's kind of hard to tell but you go over a few foot pounds and uh, that's what makes these kind of videos a bit difficult but generally speaking um, as far as digital torque wrenches, I mean, this thing only has a 90 day warranty. So, and if you're going to spend retail $175, I'm not saying you should get a snap on, but consolidated instruments, um, a variety of brands that I would probably look at before getting the 90 day warranty Quinn for a digital torque wrench. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.